route shaping. What is it and how do we use it? Well, in my last video I showed a little bit of route shaping using Google Maps. In this one, I'll show how to do it on a Garmin Drive Smart. Now, I'm going to say up front, this is not the most intuitive thing in the world, but it's one of those things where I guess it's nice to have it instead of not have it. So, so we're on the map right now, and if I go, to, let's just go to a city. Now, I have cities here but let's pretend we don't and I'll go to categories and cities and uh, we'll just go to Dallas and go now it's going to calculate that Don't simulate, don't avoid tolls. Okay. Now pretend that we're sitting in a car and you want to change the shape of the route. You're not in simulator mode, you're in live mode. So I'm just going to touch the map here and see this icon right here? That's the route shaping icon. Now it tells you the route shaping feature allows you to easily change the course of your route, touch roads, add shaping points when you are done adding points select go okay so that's the route the way it looks like now I can zoom in but the first one I'll show is let's just say I want to go to Plano first so I'm just gonna to touch it and it's gonna calculate in Plano bear in mind this is a fair amount of distance so the calculations are not instant and there it goes you can kind of see it there the purple line there that's the uh, first point and let's just say after that and oh um, before I do the next point it will tell you how many roughly how much time and distance time and distance it will add to it and let's just say I want to go to Garland next okay so I'll touch that It's going to calculate that in. Again, not quick. For a significant distance, not exactly quick. And again, this is a Drive Smart 50. It is roughly the same speed on the newer models. It might be a little slower, a little faster, depending on the route that you're taking. Yeah, it's taking its sweet time with this one. And while it's doing that, this is why I say it's nice to have, but not the most intuitive thing in the world. Because as you will notice, yes, I can shape it, but I can't just... Uh, it's not like the trip planner, where I can just type in addresses or locations or coordinates that I want. This is strictly map interaction only. And wow, it does not want to go to Garland very fast, does it? I'm leaving this in the video. I'm totally leaving it in here. So you can just see what it is you would be dealing with. Hmm. Man, it's taking a long time. Now, if you had seen my other video, if you want to see a faster way of doing this, not on a Garmin, see my previous video on Magic Earth, the smartphone app. That thing is quick. That's really, really quick when you want to do route shaping on that one. But when you're doing it on a Drive Smart or Nuvi, it is slow. Okay, finally done. So I'm going to back up a little bit. So we start here, go here, go here. Okay. And for this last one here, and I could do pinch zoom. Actually, I'll, I'll see if I can do it. Yep, I can do it. Okay. And I'm going to get really specific with this one. Head into Irving. Go into the center of town. Is that as far as... No, I can still go in farther. Is that as far as I can go? Yeah, okay. 
0.2 miles is the maximum zoom I can go, and I will go, I'll just go right there. And it's going to calculate this one. Then we will back out and ex examine the entire route. Mm. Again, this takes a while. Yeah, it is a significant amount of distance. I know I've said that already, but just to reiterate the point, if it was a shorter trip, maybe not more than 25, 30 miles at most, it would calculate a lot faster, for sure. It also might be that, no, actually it's not. I was going to say it's because I'm avoiding tolls, but I'm not. So this is pretty much as fast as it gets for a uh, complicated road system like the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Will it eventually get it done? Yes, it will eventually get it done. And then you can be on your way, but woof. Wow, this takes some time. And I didn't pick a complicated route on purpose, mind you. I'm not doing that just for the video. This is really how it acts. Might be a little faster on an older model like a 2599. Or possibly one of the newer ones like the DriveSmart 66. I've not used that model. But it's possibly faster on that one. Possibly. Again, haven't used it. Uh, this is... I, the DriveSmart 50 is a uh, 2018 model, pretty sure. It's either 2018 or 2019. I know the DriveSmart 51, that, yeah, that one I believe is a 2019. Okay, there it goes, finally done. So, add an hour and 31, 91 minutes and 68 miles. Uh, with an addition of 41, so let's back up. I'm going to use the plus minus buttons this time. Alright, let's see what happened here. Alright, so there's the start point. There, 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 and to destination, and go. Simulate, yes. Get rid of the volume. And because this is a Drive Smart 50, I can bring up a turns list. Okay. I can also click here, here, and view the map of the overall journey. And in addition to that, I should be able to go to Apps, Trip Planner, and My Active Route and save it if I wanted to save this route. I can totally do that, so I can re remember it for a future trip if I had to. In short, that is pretty much it. Oh, and I'll end on this note. If you do plan on using the route shaping feature uh, on a drive smart, please make certain that you have upgraded the firmware first through Garmin Express, because in the initial release of the drive smarts, the uh, route shaping had a bug, which was squashed with the uh, the firmware release. On this one in particular, it is version 5.9, but on other models it would be like version 6.0, 6.1, whatever is Garmin Express gives you for the most current firmware release, just use it, because otherwise I think what happens is that it would only plot one point and it wouldn't allow you to plot additional points. Not exactly certain, but it was a known issue with it, which can be fixed just by getting the most latest firmware. So there you go, route shaping on a drive smart.